Hiya folks, my name is Adam and I like to make tiny nerdy things, and this channel just passed 100,000 subscribers. Me! So as a thank you, I thought it would be fun to fulfill my most requested request. Oh, and as an added bonus, I'm going to be giving it away, so stick around to the end to learn how you can win your very own tiny blue boy. I decided that I wanted to make a blue Hynix because the blue one was my favorite. I liked his coloring the most, and he also happens to be the color of the Hynix in the Breath of the Wild art book that is providing the template upon which I am basing all of my body dimensions. To bulk up his body, I'm going to use some foil left over from last night's dinner. Not only is this going to prevent me from wasting a ton of clay on bulking up the center of his body, it'll also keep it much lighter and give me a reason to order another couple burritos to replenish my aluminium stocks. Once I've got his shiny metal center built up, I'll add a thin layer of clay and bake it once to cure it. This will give me a much firmer body to work on once I start adding that blue clay in. Now as far as the blue clay is concerned, I'm going to take some blue clay, some grey clay, and some black clay, and then smash them together. This will leave me with a lovely middlekin blue. Now I opted to make more than I needed rather than run out halfway through and hope that I could mix the same color again. And then it's just a case of adding a thin layer over the entire body until all of the grey is covered up. Now as is often the case, I'm going to start working from the feet upwards. His feet are just like any pair of feet, only they are bi-digital in that he's only got two big toes rather than, you know, five of them. Now I spent a shockingly large amount of time looking at pictures of Hynix butts, so it's only fair that you have to watch me lovingly sculpt his ample backside. Otherwise, the legs are pretty straightforward, a couple of knees, a hint of muscle, and random fat rolls will finish them off and we can get onto his fur loincloth. Now it is a shame to hide that impressive posterior, but in an effort to retain a vestige of his dignity, I'm gonna give him a pair of fancy fur tidy whities Though I guess they're less tidy whitey and more tidy furries? At any rate, I've torn off random pieces of brown clay, and I'll attach those around the waist. To help keep his pants up, I've cut a length of twine to act as a belt, and then I'll cover the front section with a bit of this sort of reddish cloth. Now the observant among you may recognize this as the same color as that bokoblin skin that I used for the stone talus model a couple weeks ago, and it's kind of up to you to decide what material his loincloth is made of. Finally, I've made his little wooden shin guard out of some clay pieces that I will stick together and then texture using the ball stylus, then string them all together using a tiny strand of dark brown clay. And we're on to my favorite part, which is giving him his big old fat belly rolls. The easiest way to do this is to roll out a bunch of thick blue wormy dealies and stick them to the body wherever I think that they will accentuate his natural curves. He's got a wonderful muffin top, so I want to make sure it spills over his belt line appropriately, and he's also got the kind of pectoral definition you'll only really see in a retired Mr. Olympia. Then once I've blended his back rolls into his upper body, I'm ready to move on to the next step. But first, I should probably wash my hands. I'm afraid I just blew myself. <laughs> there are still a couple more things that I need to add before he's ready for his initial bake. First, I'm gonna need to add the darker blue spots that cover his skin, so I'm gonna poke some shallow grooves that I will fill with a blue clay, mixed with a little bit of black, and then I'll blend those in using the backside of my sculpting tool. Then I can press some divots into the ends of his toes, which will be where I put my toenails. These are just made out of little balls of off-white clay that I can press into place, then make appropriately gnarly using the sharp end of my tools. Then it's into the oven with the body, and I can get started on the head. To make the head, I've taken a big ball of blue clay and poked a big crater into it using the largest makeup brush I could find in the bathroom. The eyeball is just a ball of yellow clay that I've baked ahead of time to make sure I don't deform it while I'm adding all the extra pieces. And then the eyelids are a combination of pink and blue wormy dealies layered on top of one another. And once I've smoothed everything out, I can cut the shape of the mouth out and then fill in his gaping maw with some more of my pink clay. Finally, I've made a couple of teeth using some more of that bone white clay, and these get pressed into place in the mouth, and then I can add his big purple tongue. Like so many monsters in the Zelda universe, our Hynix nose is somewhat porcine, and I can't help but wonder if it isn't a recurring theme throwing back to Ganondorf's original boar-like appearance. At any rate, the head is mostly done, and we're ready to stick it onto the body and blend it into the neck. 
Of course, like all good sculptures, wormy dealies will act as his neck rolls, and I can use the back side of my sculpting tool as well as my silicone rollers to blend it in and give it a nice smooth neck roll appearance. Same as I did to the body, I'll poke random divots and fill them in with darker clay to make the necessary cuckoo pox marks. His ears are made out of triangles of blue clay that I folded over then filled with pink clay, and his wiry hair is made of off-white noodles that get stuck on rather haphazardly. Finally, he's got a couple little tufts of hair on top as well as a 5 o'clock shadow that any prepubescent teen would be proud of. Then the finishing touch before we move on to his arms will be his teeny tiny birthday hat. However, before I add the arms, I thought it would be easier to make his ramshackle jacket, which I made out of some nice dark brown clay. Now, like any master tailor, I'll fit him first before taking measurements and resizing it until I'm left with the Armani jacket of the Hyrulean world. And just like Armani, I'm going to use a dish rag to give it a natural texture. Top tip, if you use a dirty dish rag, you can get some really interesting textures as a result of leftover bits of dirt and food. And one final fitting and I can cut the armholes before using my scalpel and some tweezers to give it that hobo chic style that screams I make my living sculpting tiny nerdy things on YouTube. And with that done, I hope you've got your open carry permit ready because it is time for the gun show. And by gun show, I mean I'm going to roll out some oddly shaped blue noodles and give them the teeniest bit of muscular definition, then cover most of it up with pockmarked wrinkles. Potato potato. Now before I get started on the hands, I want to make the Hynix equivalent of the Master Sword a big old tree. Now I did consider just going out into the garden and getting a small twig to use as a tree, but I figured why not go all in on the sculpting and make my own out of brown clay and a little paint. Now I know in the past I've said on multiple occasions that I don't like making hands, but what I should have said is that I don't like making human hands. I love making monster hands because they eschew anatomical accuracy in favor of looking cool. And a Hynix hand is basically just a wrinkly three-fingered claw. So with my Hynix hand gripping the master tree, I'll press it into the arm and blend it into the forearm. Then I can add a variety of wrinkles across the arm and up the shoulder before adding more of the dark blue spots and some gnarly fingernails. The other arm will follow the exact same process, only instead of a tree, it's got a stylish golden bangle. While the colored clay works brilliantly for the majority of the coloring, I find it works best if you're willing to paint in the details. A dry brush of light brown over the jacket will really bring out all the dirty tea towel textures, and the same thing on the loincloth will highlight all of those questionable underwear stains. Do the same thing to the tree to highlight all the branches and textures on the bark, and then a couple shades of terracotta mixed with purple will lay the base for my iris, which I will highlight using a bright blue before adding the black pupil over top. Finally, a little UV resin will give the eye a nice shiny shine. Now, what's a Hynix without his beautiful necklace of randomly assorted weapons? This isn't any particular Hynix, so if the weapons aren't appropriate for the location of Blue Hynix, well, that's fine. Call it poor research, laziness, or artistic license. I, however, decided that I wanted to make a spiked Moblin Club, which I think turned out hella cute, and is, by itself, worthy of an entire video. Then I done went and one up myself and made an even more adorable sword out of a toothpick. And yet, somehow, two weapons didn't feel like enough, so I made the greatest weapon in all of Zelda, a toothpick and twine push broom. I think that the Hynix use big ropes as necklaces, and to make small ropes I use twine. So by the transitive properties of tiny nerdy things, I think I'm okay using twine to make my small rope necklace. I've tied a couple of knots into the twine, which is where I will hang the weapons and then I can tie the ends together and use a lighter to singe off all the little bits of twine sticking out. Then it's just a case of adorning my blue beauty with this beautiful twine jewelry and locking it in place using some low viscosity super glue. This stuff is great for freezing string in place, but it gives off some super nasty fumes, so make sure that you use a mask if you're going to use it. Otherwise, all that's left to do is attach my weapons to the aforementioned knots, and this blue boy is finished. For the base, I want something lightweight and simple. I know that I'm going to be shipping this somewhere, so keeping it sturdy and light is paramount. To that end, a simple elongated foam hexagon will work wonders. 
I'll add a tiny bit of variation by gluing on some scrap pieces, then I can cover the entire base in what is quickly becoming my favorite basing material. This is a family recipe that's been passed down from father to son for over a millennia, but if you want to see how it's made, go watch my Totoro sculpture. Or, you know, go watch it anyways because I think it's pretty neato. Once it dries, I'll dry brush it with brown, then lighter brown, then lighter brown until I've got some real high quality looking dirt. To add a little grass, I'm going to use some 3mm static grass, which I'll attach by way of a little PVA glue, Mod Podge in this case, and then you could just sprinkle it over top and it looks great, but if you want it to stand on end, then a static grass applicator is... is just the tits. Finally, to add a little bit more excitement to my life, and because I don't want to send someone just a base of dirt and grass, I'll add some flowers, a little bit of green mossy flock, some boulders, some rocks, and a little bit more dirt. Then I can lock it all in place with a quick spritz of isopropyl alcohol before covering everything in a nice coat of thinned out Mod Podge. Now a lot of people ask me why I spray before gluing, and I go into great detail during my bag end video if you want to know why. Otherwise, I'm ready to glue my Hynix in place. Finally, I want to add a little bit of foliage to the master tree, so I'm going to glue a tiny bit of clump foliage onto the top, but otherwise we are onto our glamour shots. As always, a huge thank you to my newest patrons, Jennifer, Cameron McIntosh, The Happies, Isaiah Zora, MN Evans 93, Christopher Villarreal, Maximilian Vimmer, Heath Rice, Derpy, Katie Langlois, Sour Little Lemon, Rachel Gatlin, and Christy Netzer. While the things I make are tiny indeed, the time it takes to make them is anything but, and it would only be possible with the continued support of my lovely, lovely patrons. If you'd like to help out, then consider subscribing, hitting that like button, leaving a comment, and sharing this video with friends. Of course, if you want to give that little bit extra, you can always head on over to my Patreon, the link is in the description below. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this one as it's been a much requested project since I got started on my Zelda sculptures. Now thanks to you beautiful people, we managed to hit the 1000 subscriber mark before this channel turned one year old and I just think that's neato burrito. As a thank you, I want to give this tiny blue boy away. So if you'd like a chance to win, then make sure you're a subscriber, here's a hint, I know who is and who isn't, and leave me a comment down below telling me which colored Hynix is your favorite. I'll choose a winner at random and let you know before next Friday. Otherwise, we'll uh, see you next week. Cheers.